OL Reign and Kansas City Current. These two teams going head to head at Lumen Field in Seattle, Washington. This one ending 2 0, and it's Kansas City Current going to the NWSL Championship final after defeating OL Reign in the semi final. Again, we've talked about scenes, Lisa. Mm-hmm. Let's keep talking about these scenes. Kansas City putting together A, the season that they have been putting together, and B, doing all of this in the postseason on the road. It's been uh, it's been delightful to to cover. We have to talk about the game and how they made this happen, just like we did with with Portland and San Diego. Let's talk a little bit about these starting 11s. When when these lineups dropped, Lisa, did anything, uh, you know, reach out to you and move you? Did it, did you look at any of them and say this is interesting or how is this going to work? What did you think when you saw these starting 11s? But just one change for Laura Harvey's side from the last time Elle Rain played October 1st. Um, but, I mean, that's not unusual. Out of 22 games, O.L. Rain had 21 different lineups um, and, and all the heavy hitters for O.L. Rain out on the pitch to start with Haitama, Lavelle, Rapino, Balser, Fishlock, Quinn, Huerta, Cook, Hyatt, Barnes, Tolish Joyce. Like, honestly, all 11 players, yep. um, the true heavy hitters for this OL Reign side. So no real surprises in, in what Laura Harvey was throwing out there. I mean, it, it's a lot of what we expected heading into this one. Um, for Kansas City Current, we talked about Lavogé, uh dealing with an injury. She is yeah. reported to have torn her ACL. So we knew she was unavailable for this match. Um, and that Desiree Scott, after serving her suspension in the quarterfinal for Kansas City against Houston, she was back and available. So um, not too surprised to see Scott back in and Lavoje out just based on availability report and, and understanding. But um, looking at how these teams lined up, uh, I wasn't sure where Alex Luera was going to play because Lavoje played much higher up the pitch um, and Alex Luera played that defensive six in the first match for Kansas City against Houston. But that's Desi Scott's role, that defensive yeah. six midfield. And when, when looking at O.L. Reign's midfield against Kansas City's midfield, I'll say it in our preview. I said that Ola Rain was going to win the midfield battle. They're just better in the midfield. And I think that Matt Potter knew that, looked at what O.L. Rain was going to bring to the table and said, we need a double pivot when we don't have the ball. And we need eight players behind the ball when we don't have the ball. Because um, the defensive game plan for Kansas City started in the first minute with Alex Luera in the midfield, along with Desiree Scott. Uh, Luera was the double defensive mid pivot alongside Scott when Kansas City was out of possession. In possession, Luera had the freedom to spring forward and, and contribute in the attack. And I think that uh, was the most beneficial position for Luera. We've seen Luera all over the pitch for this Kansas City side. And tonight's role for Luera, probably my favorite that I've seen her in all year doing the defensive work out of possession and then in possession contributing into the attack. Um, Getting the first goal in the opening four minutes of this game. Alex Laura said, I don't want rookie of the year. Keep it. I'm chasing championships, getting on the scoreboard first early for Kansas city. And again, Lisa, I had to refrain from texting you because I said, I'm going to ask her on the show. We'll just keep it for the podcast. Um, A mad scramble, a mad scramble in this moment inside the box, but it just gets past the goal line for this opening goal. What did you think in this sequence? I mean, looking at the overall playoffs that we've faced this year with the NWSL and all the teams, um, the goalkeepers have been put under pressure and we've seen mistakes being made in the opening match for San Diego, Kaylin Sheridan, Alyssa Nay are making a mistake. Um, Fallon Tullis Joyce made a mistake in this play um, on the shot coming from Luera. But if we rewind to the start of that play, um, the the balls coming in from Kansas City, they they weren't incredible crosses. There wasn't anything too ridiculous about what was happening, but there was 
it's like the OL Reign players got in each other's way and they couldn't clear it out. Quinn tries to kick it out. They can't get it through the traffic. Then uh, another player tries to kick it out and, and it can't get out and it just squirts out a little bit and Luera is there to run through it and get the shot. So the initial clearance is horrible from OL Reign because they can't get it more than three feet away from them uh, with Kaiser in the mix, Labonta in the mix, trying to, to get on top of this scrum. But then after the shot from Luera, Fallon Tullis Joyce, it, it, she can't grab hold of it. She can't uh, jump on top of it. She gets a little bit of a touch and then it trickles into the goal. And that's a mistake that we have not seen Fallon Tullis Joyce make this year. And, and it was um, very uncharacteristic of her as a goalkeeper that has nine shutouts, the stingiest defense in the league. And, and I, I think it says so much more about Kansas City than it does about the defensive e errors of OL Reign. Because, yes, there were defensive errors, but the pressure and the determination and the willingness and the ruthlessness from Kansas City to keep pounding during that play and then for Luera to just strike it. I mean – it, what a way to start the game for Kansas City. It set the tone immediately, and it it helped Kansas City for sure get, get on the board in these opening five minutes. That's back-to-back -back playoff games that Kansas City has a goal in the opening five minutes. It's uh, it's quite the impressive stat indeed. I, I had, Watching again, watching it happen in real time, I was like, of course. Like, of course, this is how the the second semifinal – uh, gets started with a very, very early goal like this. Um, you know, you and I both in the preview, Lisa, go in with, with all rain, you know, in, in this match and, and for a number of reasons and um, just sort of watching this match, especially after that, that first goal, uh, again, the response from, from all well, I thought was, was quite good. You know, we, we saw what they have mm -hmm. done throughout the regular season uh, generate attack, you know, try to, you know, uh, generate chances and, and, and facilitate that attack, uh, keep the opposition, you know, honest in, in, in that sense, but, uh, just yeah. never finding that equalizer. And then early in the second half as well, this is, uh, an off the post shot by, by Jess Fishlock, who was celebrating a goal, but the sideline AR saying, nope. You know, not, you know, saying that that just rattled off the post and it was still 1-0 at that point. And, you know, I was I was still even with I think you can have that you could you could feel some type of way about it is what I'm saying. There are going to be people who feel some type of way about um, some of the chances within this this game for for the rain. Um, but there were stretches of some of this game where. I thought some of the players looked a little bit nervy that the moment was a little bit, a little bit big at, at certain times. Um, and one of the things that we were talking about in the preview with going with all rain is, is look, we like the, their chances heading in into this game. But I know for me, it was easy. I was saying that it was very easy to look at some of these players and circle them and say, these are players who are going to have an impact in the game, whether that was a Jess Fishlock or a Rose Lavelle, or even somebody like a Megan Rapino who has really, who really brought it on for, for club in the, the later stages of the regular season, but that that's not who I was going to be looking for to have an impact in these games. I wanted to see the young players of this OL rain side, take that next step and have that next level impact in a playoff game for this team. So I was looking for, you know, a good, good performances out of, you know, uh, Sam Hyatt, you know, Bethany Balser, uh, Jordan uh, Heidema, you know, looking for these players to continue to sort of have these, these, you know, play these roles and have these impacts on, on the pitch for the team. And I didn't think there were poor, it was poor play out of all right. I just have to think that there's a certain amount of time where and when the chances aren't going your way that perhaps you start to get a little frantic in moments. And uh, it was tough to watch at times, to be quite honest, um, because it's just sort of knowing the opposition that they were facing and somebody like a Kansas city where they could just sort of continue to play against you and stifle you and suffocate you a little bit. And then all of a sudden, quickly, 
quickly yeah. change the script on you, it came. It came right in the second half, Lisa. It was like watching a boa constrictor oh. attack its prey, strangle them, and then like eat them whole. And, and in the best way possible. The way Kansas City executed <laughs> their defensive game plan was exactly like that because all they did was pack players behind the ball yeah i mean it's it's like animal planet here all they did was pack their players behind the ball make it incredibly condensed centrally allow Brett, Megan Rapino to have the ball in a wide area to send those crosses in and then challenge anything that came in. I mean, we saw moments from Fishlock. I mean, as you mentioned, that initial shot off the crossbar um, yeah. th that she thought was in. But it, there were moments where Fishlock found space at the top of the box. We saw Rose Lavelle get one or two opportunities at the top of the box. But there was just so much traffic from Kansas City yeah. dropping behind the ball and looking to pick it up. And then when they did win it, it was like, go, go, go off to the yeah. races, attacking. And and the the presence that Kansas City was attacking with wasn't like nine, eight players. It was like three or four while the others stayed defensively compact. And I wonder if if there was that bit of defensive compactness, compactness and restraint from Kansas City because they went up a goal in the first five minutes. So it was like, okay, we're going to stick to our game plan and move quickly in transition. But instead of our seven or eight attacking players going forward, we're going to only send three. That way we can hold it down um, in the back line a little bit. And I, I'm just, I was just so impressed with how organized Kansas City was because their formation in and out of possession was so incredibly fluid. And I got to speak with Matt Potter before this match, and I asked him about that, about how he knew his team was going to be able to rotate from one position to another, one formation seamlessly flow so fluidly. And he said he didn't know. He was hoping they would. And he put the players out there, and they were sponges. They absorbed the the information they understand so well and that's what allowed them to be so fluid going from one formational shape out of possession to with the ball attacking with different numbers than they were defending and it was impressive to watch I mean Kansas City was impressive to watch tonight there was a there was a, a few moments in, in in this game which you where I wondered if these were going to be momentum shifting moments you know we saw um mm -hmm. And this is maybe where I'm going to pivot to uh, the coaches' battle again because we've been talking about it all weekend, and I, I'm including this match in that as well. In, in Harvey versus Potter, uh, we saw CC Kaiser have to come out of this game uh, at the four, at 45 because of a you know out of concussion protocol. Elise Bennett slotting in her place, I thought had an absolute great impact in this game off of the bench. Mm -hmm. It was like seamless. This this team didn't miss a beat in terms of the chemistry on the pitch, no matter who was slotting in and slotting out for this team. Um, and we saw an additional change for uh, for Kansas City in in bringing off Addison Merrick and bringing on uh, Rodriguez uh, in, in in her place. And this is also, you know, just just after this team gets that go ahead goal. Right. So I just liked I liked the adjustments that were made by Kansas mm -hmm. City in this match against all rain. Uh, disappointed that we didn't see more substitutions mm -hmm. for 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 Harvey and, and maybe a different look uh, for the team kind of kind of going forward. We did see Balser come out for for Vander Yacht, uh, just sort of after or just ahead of the, the 70th minute. But um just, just not enough in terms. I think of uh, being able to chase chase a game that was ultimately getting away from them. And there was, you know, this set piece that did happen. There's another one of these awkward moments where people are like, "When is VAR going to get in here?" And I hate to break it your heart, but VAR and goal line technology are two very different things. And yes. goal line technology is what you probably wanted in this game, not VAR. Uh, so we saw a, a goal line clearance that stood as the call off of a set piece. Jordan Heidema, you know, getting a little bit on it and sort of, you know, hitting with the hands in the air like that's a goal. Uh, 
but these these moments in which it just sort of felt like a force field was around this net against all rain and quite frankly it had a rain, 80 french the force yes i was just gonna say the force yeah. field has a name and it is 80 french wow oh, our yeah. brains are the same <laughs> oh yeah Oh yeah, speak on it. Speak on it, Lisa. I'm giving it to you. I mean, Preach. It, it is. It yes, it is 100% AD French because Owl Rain was raining shots. They were raining opportunities um, because 14 corners in this game to Kansas City's two, and it was constantly Megan Rapino whipping opportunities into the box and. If, if Kansas City defense wasn't getting to it first, it was French laying her body on the line, making incredible diving saves, one-handed saves. We saw so many times it was a last-minute save because Kansas City had so many bodies in the box. French couldn't even see all of the shots coming at her. Um, I mean, it was just so impressive to watch French. Seven saves in this match. And um, they were off good shots and good opportunities from OL Rain. I mean, at the end of this, um, I, I like to look at expected goals just because it tells you a little bit more accurately instead of shots and shots on goal. And Laura Harvey's side ending with 1.34 expected goals to Kansas City's 0.81. So Kansas City wasn't even expected to get one goal in this match, and they ended up getting two. And OL Rain expected at least one, perhaps. Uh, one and a half. We're getting close to that. Uh, it was because the pressure that OL Rain continued to put on. I mean, the closest opportunity coming, I think, from the corner kick where yeah. it, it Mace tried to get onto it. It goes off the near post. It goes up. It looks like French can't really grab it. Something happens. And then she actually hits into Luera, who ends up dropping it, and Luera makes the goal line save to get it off. Um, I, I saw a couple of replays of that. I don't think it crossed the line by any means. Um, of course, it, you don't know unless you're there looking at it or you got goal line technology. But, I mean, probably the closest chance that they had. And it wasn't even that clean of a chance, right? Like, it was a great save from Luera, but, like, I, I don't know. I mean, I, the defense of Kansas City clearly outplayed the offense of OL Reign, and AD French outplayed OL Reign. It was it was an outstanding performance. I, I think at one point I was in my live tweeting of the match. I was just like, you could just see it: seven red bodies in a box, just collectively defending. Yeah against uh, the rain uh, French coming out of this game with seven saves. There's 39 clearances for Kansas city coming out of this game. Uh, like, you know, from, 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 and that's from, if you're looking at the other, another stat like crosses where, where the rain were serving in 47 crosses. It's, it's a, uh, it's ridiculous stats. And uh, it's, it's all part of the equation. I think, right. When you sort of look at yeah. some other parts, in terms of how Kansas City was able to go on the road once more and now uh, win another postseason match. This time, this one means that they're going to go to the NWSL Championship Final. So it's set. It's set. We have our two teams. We have our big date. It's going to happen. Spooky season in full effect. Halloween weekend, October 29th, the NWSL Championship Final will be Portland Thorns FC against Kansas City Current.